Hi, my name is Anna Margaret, and we're going to be working on some hip openers today through a yin practice. So you might need a couple props. So if you have a blanket or two handy and maybe a block or even two blocks, that might be very beneficial in the practice today. Let's go ahead and start on our backs. So please lie down. And you're welcome. If you have any lower back um, issues going on, you might want to lie down with your feet on the floor. But if not, just stretch the legs out for a moment and let's just take inventory of our breath and where our body is today. And we'll just start with some even breathing. So go ahead and take a deep breath in and a full breath out. And let's start to inhale for one, two, three, four. And exhale, one, two, three, four. And do that again at your own pace. Inhale, four. And exhale, four. And I really like to start with the breath for a couple reasons. One, it, for me at least, it signals the transition of my day to my practice. Another is it helps me to know how I'm breathing. And third, it helps my mind to move inward. So it makes me more present. So just do two or three more rounds. Now when you're ready, go ahead and bend your knees and bring your feet to the ground. And then we'll bring our knees into our chest. And if you'd like, go ahead and place your hands on your knees and just start to take the legs in a circle. And we'll go in one direction a few times. See how the lower back is feeling, how the hips are doing today. And then at some point we'll change direction. And then please hold, we're going to bring our knees in a little bit more and then hold the insides of the feet. And we're going to come into what's called stirrup pose in yin yoga. So we're going to do our best to stack the ankle over the knee. You're welcome to just hold the insides of your feet and gently draw the knees down. Sometimes what happens is we kind of over tense the shoulders. So let the shoulders also drop down towards the mat. And then check in and see how your right side is feeling. And then check out how your left side is feeling. And then go back to your breath. And we'll just take a few more seconds here, please. And just notice where things start to get churned up. It might be a physical churning or emotional, mental. But know that we have a choice of just being able to watch what's happening. And then we'll slowly release the feet, return them back to the mat, and just maybe a little bit wider than the hips so we can gently just drop the knees from side to side. And 
And you can welcome to turn your head in the opposite direction of the knees. We'll go ahead and come back to center. Bring the knees into your chest and then drop them over to your right. And you're welcome to just use your right hand to help you anchor the legs. Then go ahead and take the left arm overhead. And I like this pose. One, it helps us to stretch the outer hip, but it also helps the spine to rotate so we maintain the flexibility of our spine, which is so important as we live in this world. And as you hold in the pose, you might find that the left shoulder can drop a little bit more. And without forcing it, we just start to rotate and twist to the left. You can keep your head in neutral. You're welcome to turn your head to the right. Or some people might enjoy turning their head to the left. Last few breaths here. And then slowly we'll release. Can lower the left hand, bring the knees back to center and just pause for a moment. And if it feels right for you and you'd like to bring your knees into your chest, go ahead. And then take your time. Please drop your knees over to the left. Again, you can anchor your legs with your left arm. And this time we'll bring the right arm overhead. And you can keep your head in neutral. You can turn it to the right or even to the left. And in the quietude, start to experience yourself. What arises in the mind? Is it a repetitive story? Is it a new insight? But how do we respond mentally and emotionally to what arises? And what I found is I have a choice. I don't have to be on automatic. You don't have to be reactive. We decide the fate, the outcome of our thoughts and our attitudes. Please take just a few more breaths here. And then you take your time and roll back to the middle. Bring your knees into your chest. And then please roll to your right side. And we'll come up on our hands and knees. And we'll transition into child's pose. Okay. And some people really enjoy child's pose with their knees together and 
Some people enjoy it more with the knees apart. So if you'd like to go for a wider, a wide-legged child's pose, you're welcome to do that. And we'll take our time. Come down. And if your head doesn't quite make it, you're welcome to put a block under your head. And we'll rest here for a few minutes. We can breathe down into the lower belly. We can breathe into our hips, into the ankles. Keep softening into the pose. You might find that your knees can also go a little bit wider. Last couple minutes, please. Again, just follow and observe the mind. If you feel like the thoughts are piling up too much, then perhaps go back to counting the inhales and exhales. Or breathing into a specific part of your body. or being able to stand back as a witness. Last few breaths here. You might find that you can reach out even further. And whenever you feel it's, you can stay here longer. If you feel like it's time to come out, you can lift your head a little bit and just start to walk your hands back. So no rush. And then as you press down through your hands, you're gonna bring one knee in and then the opposite knee. Perhaps take a few extra breaths in a regular child's pose. And then we'll take our time and roll all the way up. And this might be a good time to lie down on your back again and take Shavasana for a few minutes. Wishing you a wonderful day. Om Shanti.